Hey everybody, it's Keith Brown. We're talking about how to be wise with our money because we're talking uh, about wisdom and we're looking at some practical aspects of wisdom that we get from Proverbs. But this week our reference scripture comes from Matthew chapter 6 and starting with verse 19. And it reads like this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This tells us a whole bunch about how to be wise with our money. And then yet, uh, Monday... We talked about the fact that we need to earn it and handle it properly. Um, And we talked about the fact that, you know, the get rich uh, quick schemes are not good and and how you obtain it sometimes will cause destruction. And, And if you didn't see those videos, please go back and watch them. And then yesterday I talked about the fact that we need to be diligent. Diligent means that we just keep doing it over and over and over again. We need to be diligent with the way we handle money. And then uh, today, well, I want to kind of break away here just for a moment because right at the end of yesterday, I talked about the fact that, you know, when you sow seed, uh, uh, and and that's what God does. He talks about seed time and harvest all the way through the Bible. And many times he's talking about that as far as uh, our money. When you look at Malachi chapter 3, you've all heard this passage when it talks about money. It says, do not rob God because when you don't give of your tithes and offerings, you are robbing God and you're cursed with a curse. Now people want to argue with me and say, wait a minute, we've been delivered from the the curse of the law. That's true, we have. But the law is still in effect. If we don't do the law, the, the law is the word. You know, do not kill. It means do not kill, do not steal, do not, you know, covet your neighbor's wife and so forth. Don't do all that kind of stuff. The Bible's clear about it. That's the law. It's still in effect. Don't do it. However, we're, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. What's the curse? Death. We've been redeemed from that. And so we can confess our sins and God is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, but the thing of it is, is we're cursed with a curse if we don't give our tithes and offerings. We're, 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 and it's not just tithes, but it's also offerings. But that's an Old Testament teaching. So let me take you to the New Testament teaching. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians in chapter 9. Yeah, I have so much problems with this Bible. It's so big and the pages are still stuck together. Hang on, you guys. Don't go away. Chapter 9 and verse, uh, let's look at um, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now think about it. If we're talking about seeds, if we're talking to a farmer, if he just throws out a couple grains of corn, guess what he's going to get back? He's just going to get a couple stalks of corn, right? But if he sows plentifully, I mean bountifully, then he's going to get a lot back, right? I mean, it's just common sense. So it goes on to say, uh, so let each one give or sow as he purposes in his heart. Now again, so this tells us that this giving thing is a heart thing. And we've talked about this before, but it's important that we know it's a heart thing. So we give as we purpose in our heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity. In other words, if you have an attitude about giving, don't give. It's a waste of time. And if you're giving because someone says, boy, you better give to our ministry because if you don't, we're going to have to go off the air. Let them go off the air. You don't give because of of necessity, and you don't give grudgingly. Look look what it says. Uh, uh, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Watch this. And God is able... Now this is when you do all this thing, when you sow bountifully and when you sow not uh, not with a grudgingly, grudgingly, 
how would that be? A heart that's grudgingly, I guess. Anyway, that you don't sow grudgingly or out of necessity, but you give with a cheerful heart. This is what happens. Verse 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace, not some grace, all grace. Grace is, is God's favor. So God is able to make all of his favor abound. That means to increase greatly towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things will have an abundance for every good work. Now you can argue with scripture if you want to. But that's what the Bible says. When we give as we purpose in our heart. Not grudgingly or out of necessity. But as cheerful givers. And we do that bountifully. We also reap bountifully. And, and God is able to do all that. Now look at verse 10. This is the one that I really wanted to get to. I'm running a little late, but that's okay. Now may he who supplies seed. Who's he who supplies seed? It's God. God supplies the seed. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food uh, may he multiply. Uh, sup, let me reread this. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. This is saying that God gives you the seed and if you'll sow it properly like we've just been talking about that he'll multiply it greatly. Amen. That's seed time and harvest and that's the proper way to give and that's all part of our uh, wisdom and how to uh, handle our finances. We'll pick this up again tomorrow. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.